questions I would love lockdown enthusiasts to answer for me. Please share this widely. Hopefully we can get some answers to these important questions. Question is what metric, what number justifies lockdowns and why? Is it the case fatality rate? Is the number of fatalities overall that justify it? I assume you were okay with not locking down in the past during flu season. Uh, so you're okay with that number, but you're not okay with the COVID number. So what exactly is that number? Is it so somewhere in between the flu and the COVID? Or maybe you, you've had an epiphany and you've realized that one death is too many and we ought to be locked down perpetually. Uh, if that's so, are you justifying a perpetual lockdown going forward to avoid even one death? Maybe it's not the number of deaths or the case fatality rate, but it's the amount of health care available. Uh, if so, how much health care needs to be available before we are free to live our lives? I've climbed mountains and gone scuba diving in countries that have no health care. Should I have been allowed to do that? Is, is that too dangerous? Um, should we lock down whenever the city emerge departments or ICUs get full. Uh, we used to joke about this on, on the ambulance all the time. I'd say, hey, Joe, it must be a full moon tonight or something, bud. Uh, crazy night. We should uh, we should have the authorities lock down the city. Am I right? <laughs> yeah, Tim. No one moves. No one gets hurt. Am I right? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm sorry I ever made that joke now. Uh, but do you advocate for perpetual lockdowns going forward based on uh, how busy the ERs are going why or why not is that a principle that only applies during COVID, or is that a principle that applies all the time question number two what are all the negative unintended consequences of lockdown what about declining mental health drug overdoses domestic violence suicide uh, the downstream effect of shutting down services like cancer screenings and elective surgeries what, what are the adverse effects of increased impoverishment of production shutdowns, of unemployment, of bankruptcy and foreclosure, of money printing and dollar devaluation, of debt enslavement. Do any of these negative consequences even cross your mind when you cheer for shutdowns? Do you even consider my neighbor Frank who is losing his house due to unemployment? What about my buddy Dustin who lost his gym? How about my friend Linda whose teenage daughter is cutting herself and talking about suicide because of the social isolation? Did you even know that their lives were going to be harmed? Um, my doctor can tell me the adverse effects of the treatment he prescribes to me, but can you even tell me a tiny fraction of the adverse effects of these lockdowns? And when would you consider the consequences of the lockdowns worse than the virus itself? I mean, if it turns out that the lockdowns save more lives in the short term or save lives in the short term, but kill many more lives than that in the long term, would you be against these lockdowns? Question number three, when is it too dangerous for me to go to work? I'm a firefighter paramedic, and apparently it's not too dangerous for me to walk into heavy viral loads in uncontrolled and unpredictable environments, providing hands-on care to the most vulnerable members of my community, but it is too dangerous for me to work out in a gym with the healthiest members of my community. Is it just that you need me to run into a burning building and save your ass, but you don't need me to do anything that might improve my health? When does science say it's too dangerous for me to go to work? I'll give you a hint. You can't answer that question. Only I can. I run into burning buildings for a living, so my risk tolerance is probably a little bit different than yours. But if I'm allowed to manage my own risk, why shouldn't other people be allowed to manage their own risk? Question number four. What human right would you personally refuse to violate to prevent the spread of COVID-19? Would you have nuked Wuhan if it would have prevented 3 million COVID deaths worldwide? Would you kill 1,000 COVID positive patients if it would prevent 1,001 deaths? What about 2,000 deaths? What about 10,000 deaths? What if killing 1,000 COVID patients prevented 1 million deaths? Would you kill those people? Is there any aspect of an individual human's life that you would refuse to control and meddle in for the greater good? All right, question number five is, what does science say we ought to do? Now, science is good at telling us facts about what is, but it isn't good at telling us what our values ought to be. Unless you think you've solved the is ought gap problem that has vexed philosophers for centuries. If 
your highest value is simply preventing COVID spread. Science might tell us to exterminate everyone who tests positive, North Korea style. At 9 a.m., we have one COVID positive citizen. At 10 a.m., we have zero COVID positive citizens. But if your value, your highest value is something like human flourishing and liberty, then science might tell us we ought to do something completely different, like maybe get the government the hell out of our private lives. Now, if you would not nuke a city to save the world from the COVID pandemic, I happen to think that's a good thing. I applaud you. It means that you have a value that is higher than simply preventing the spread of COVID. It means that you might not be made of the same stuff as the most murderous dictators in the history of the world who all thought that they were killing for the greater good. And I would love for you to articulate what that value or principle is because you might find that the ethical principle that stops you from nuking cities and executing people might also stop you from ruining lives and causing indirect pain, suffering, and death by imposing lockdowns and life stoppages.